I on behalf, I Anand Pillai on behalf of NHRDN Network in association with Corporate Executive Board, I'm very happy to welcome all of you to this virtual uh, topic, Unleashing the Power of Talent Assessment. This particular webinar or learning session is primarily part of another larger program called the Economic Times Young Leader Program. This is a competition that gives national recognition to top young leaders as they compete in the place for a place in the ranking of India's most promising leaders. Each edition of uh, ETYL attracts over 20,000 applications and the top 50 of these candidates are chosen after a very rigorous assessment and CEO interviews. In this part of the webinar, we will be talking about the assessment part and how talent assessment plays in the entire time. First thing, the process, how there is a strong preference of winner group and vice versa. We will also, the participants will learn how uh, uh, ETYL has identified the competencies for success. You will also be able to recognize and understand the stage by stage process and outcome of each stage and how the shortlist is arrived at. You will learn competency based interview and also go forward to see how the winner's experience uh, creates a very powerful employee branding. To talk about this very important topic in the pipeline, we have an expert, Dr. Pearl John, who is a consulting director, uh, talent management at Corporate Executive Board India. He is based in uh, Mumbai and he is part of the India leadership team. Dr. Pearl John is a very well regarded uh, leader in the assessment and leadership development space, having worked in over 28 countries across the globe, which includes uh, major portions of America, Europe and Asia Pacific. And I'm very happy to know that, to let you know that Dr. Pearl, in addition to being a professional, he is also very passionate about this particular topic. He brings uh, a very sharp insight into leadership behaviors and has facilitated coaching sessions for the top leadership in the country and across the region, <coughs> including managing directors of reputed organizations, to name a few, HSBC, Philips, and so on. His clients have uh, uh, that he has serviced uh, include the big four, which includes uh, P, uh, uh, Pricewaterhouse, uh, Ernest & Young, KPMG, and Deloitte consulting firms. He also has worked with the United Nations, World Health Organization, and a large number of Fortune 500 uh, corporations. As mentioned earlier, he leads the South Asia assessment and certification for portfolio and is a lead facilitator and a master coach for certification programs, including the very popular insight at work, both levels A and B, assessor skills, competency-based interviewing skills, ACDC design and implementation courses. Dr. Pearl John, as a core team member, has facilitated setting up consulting operations in India. He has played a very significant role in building internal capacity and capability. He provides the technical architecture for client-specific solutions and engages in end-to-end -end conceptualization of the design and implementation of for both top as well as senior management interventions. Dr. Pearl, I would be very happy to say that he has conceptualized discover uh, practice in India and he has uh, uh, walks through the entire assessment process and uh, equip the learners and the participants uh, through, through this talent assessment uh, process. Over to you Dr. Pearl. I the power started this discussion.
a competitive and increasingly global economy, one needs to invest significantly in talent. Even distribution around it is forcing organizations to know In the backdrop of these realities, an assessment to identify young leaders has garnered immense importance. And the Economic Time Young Leader, we will refer to as ETYL, a program ably meets that need across the uh, India Inc. Within this webinar, it is my intent to unpack for you the ETYL process. And what I'd like to do in terms of the structure is essentially to focus on this in three parts. I will start with giving you a sense of the ETYL initiative and talk you through the target profile, the assessment framework and the methodology. Thereafter, I will endeavor to highlight the ETYL process and give you a quick rundown on the four phases involved and end that session with some key assessment best practices and insights and also raise potential risks that one needs to be cognizant of should one implement a program such as the ETYL. And at that stage, I will request Priyanka Kosla, one of the ETYL winners, to share her experience of going through the entire assessment process. And thereon, I will move on to the key assessment output and comparison with benchmark organization. And this will then take us to the close of the presentation. Let me provide you an overview of the initiative. The Economic Times and Leaders Program is clearly seen as a platform for recognizing and rewarding India's most promising young managers. And this initiative is meant to encourage, identify, and nurture promising future business leaders of India Inc. It is a national program sponsored by the Economic Times, the largest circulating business daily in the country. And the intent is to identify young corporate leaders. And after a fairly intensive selection process, CB was chosen as the knowledge partner with responsibility for designing an assessment methodology to identify the top 50 at that point leaders from a pool of applicants. 
And the UTY-wide initiative has been run across a number of years starting 2011. The target profile essentially is of young leaders who are corporate executives comprising of uh, an age group of 26 to 32 with uh, a three to five year experience band who are not only at the cusp of entering the leadership cadre within their organizations, but also those who are looking to improve their leadership quotient. And this program administers a combination of assessment tools, online as well as on ground, and culminates in a face-to-face -face interview with leaders from the corporate world. A list of the top young leaders is attained at the end of the assessment across the four phases. Now, in terms of the methodology of arriving at the assessment framework, given the high stakes involved in the assessment and also the onerous responsibility of ensuring the right leadership talent from across the country is progressed, we adopted a structured approach and scanned the existing literature on leadership, carried out in-depth conversations with senior chief executives and MDs of organizations, engaged with thought leaders in the leadership space, and agreed on targeting the assessment at leadership behavioral level rather than at a trait level. The primary driver being leaders are acknowledged based on what they do rather than what they know or where their moorings are. The diverse conversations with key corporate leaders and the scanning of the leadership behaviors significantly collapsed with the SHL's Universal Competency Framework, referred as the UCS. The UCS provided a detailed and well-integrated taxonomy of behaviors to describe leadership at work, and the effort was to clearly crystallize the set of competencies that were acknowledged as crucial for success in leadership roles, and the following competencies were agreed upon. And I will come to that in a moment. It was the considered view of the thought leaders and the practicing CEOs that an in-depth assessment be carried out on these competencies that were culled out of the UCS. Let me very quickly give you an overview of the competencies that we looked at. Deciding and initiating action, leading and supervising, working with people, relating and networking, analyzing, formulating strategies and concepts, delivering results and meeting customer expectations, adapting and responding to change, and entrepreneurial and commercial thinking. The entire assessment regime is constructed around these set of behaviors, such that we are able to get a deeper insight as to how far our applicants demonstrating these competencies within the world of work. The program objective essentially is to create a single largest platform that encourages, identifies, and nurtures promising future business leaders, which essentially is to do with publicly identifying high performance managers, test them and groom them suitably over a long, short duration, supported by a high decibel editorial and marketing activity across media, and help build and boost their public profile, helping fast track their careers. With that, what I would like to do is to move on to the next section of the presentation. And in this section, I would like to walk you through the ETYL process encompassing the four phases and call out the salient features of each phase and get you to see the geometric proportion of uh, reductions in the applicant pool. Given the national reach of the initiative and anchored by the economic times, we truly envisaged a significant turnout of applicants. And sure enough, uh, there were typically 15,000 plus applicants that one gets in a year. And the, you do recognize the eco economy has unleashed a number 
of aspirants whose skill sets are not with their aspirations. And therefore, it becomes imperative to use time more efficiently than ever before and take advantage of the best tools in the market. And these tools help eliminate unqualified candidates faster and assess potential contenders more efficiently. And within the ETYL context, what we saw was a significant reduction to geometric proportions across each phase of the process. From phase one, which is uh, the start of the process, to phase two, we saw a one-fifth reduction of the applicant pool using the quick sift. And I will share with you more details on what this quick sift is all about. And from phase two to phase three, we saw a reduction to one-tenth of the applicant pool employing a combination of personality and ability tests. And from phase three to phase four, we saw a one-fourth of the applicant pool progressing on with the use of an assessment center to the final phase, which was to do with the CEO interviews. Thus, the effective sifting process enabled a significant reduction in the time to select, the fair and valid screening out of significant proportion of unsuitable candidates, an increase in the likely success rate of candidates entering the formal assessment process, and a significant reduction in the person hours spent managing the entire sifting process. Also, it is important to call out the positive candidate experience that this provided, and importantly, how it moved the person time investment from sifting to assessment. Now let me give you a sense of what each phase entailed at an overview level, and thereafter I will deep dive onto each phase. And I will perhaps start with phase zero. Once the Economic Time announces the, y, the Young Leaders Program, applicants register on the Young Leaders Program website. And based on a very clearly detailed out eligibility criteria set by the Economic Times, applicants are sifted out. And the current eligibility criteria that are uh, enforced are detailed out on, on the screen. And applicants are required to be essentially Indian resident nationals and between the age group of 26 to 32 years. And um, they cannot necessarily be employees of the Bennett Coleman and Company Limited or the group companies of the Times of Group and uh, cannot be a member or an employee of CEB, FHL, a member of the jury for ETYL or be self-employed. Typically, you would, you would ex get about 25,000 applications at this stage, and they are shortlisted uh, candidates are progressed on to phase one, wherein email IDs for the quick sift assessment is triggered by the ETYL team. And the Economic Times final, finalizes the program mentors at this stage and the jury for the final round of the assessment. So you have the entire plethora of issues surrounding the uh, actual implementation is covered comprehensively. What I would like to do is to give you a quick rundown of the phase one to four. Uh, so it gives you a panoramic view of how the assessment progresses from one phase to another and uh, the typical numbers surrounding it. And then I will move in into each of those phases and deep dive to give you a clear understanding of what it involves in each of those phases. So the phase one is one of the online tests where the candidates undergo the quick sift assessment. And typically, you have about 15,000 odd candidates who come in at this stage. And the second phase is uh, the online testing, the second part of it, where shortlisted candidates are tested on their uh, analytical capabilities, particularly with regard to verbal and uh, numerical abilities, and also personality. And the phase three is the on-ground assessment. And typically, you have about uh, uh, 330 people from the 3,000 in, in phase two, which come in and at phase three. 
where you take people through a structured set of uh, scenarios, that simulation, which uh, helps to uh, differentiate people who actually demonstrate those uh, behaviors that are congruent to the framework that we are assessing. And the phase four is the final phase where participants who clear the phase three are progressed or into the one-to-one -one, uh, conversation with CEOs and typically the numbers uh, lie around 80. With that, let me go on to the phase one. The phase one essentially is uh, a sifting out phase. All candidates who fulfill the eligibility criteria undergo the quick sift assessment. And uh, typically this uh, phase is kept open for approximately three to four weeks uh, to receive maximum registrations. And once the registrations are closed, CV pulls out the scores of all candidates and recommends the list of shortlisted candidates based on preset criteria. And typically you find about 13,000 to 15,000 applicants who are assessed per year in this uh, phase one. 15,000 applicant, applicants is a large number that uh, sifting through these numbers can be a significant challenge, particularly if you need to make objective sense of the applicant's capability to be a young leader. And this is where the quick sift comes to play. Structured around the key competencies, the quick sift is a powerful next generation sifting tool that significantly enhances the efficiency when having to manage large volumes of data. This necessarily had to do with high tech and user friendly that provides a quick scan of the individual's potential to be a leader based on the competencies that have been identified. Within the quick sift, questions are presented in groups of four statements, and one or two statements relate directly to the competencies essential for effective performance in the role. And the candidate identifies which statement is most or least like them. The applicant is required to respond to 40 such questions. And the system scores the statements relating to the essential competencies and results are compared to a relevant group and a merit list is generated. And uh, the existing benefit of this approach is that you are able to actually build in a high quality selection where this can be an effective predictor of performance uh, as structured interviews. Uh, so that's, that's a significant statement uh, wherein you are able to at very, very limited, uh, intense, time intensive uh, input able to generate such a significant output. It also leads to uh, significant cost and time savings. And it takes uh, an average time of about 20 minutes to complete, but um, the results can be immediately generated. The focus of the phase one is clearly to screen out, sift out, applicants who are less likely to be good fit and thus become a first level filter, if you will, to sift out those who do not make the cut. A complex algorithm encompassing multiple factors ensure that we do not sift out potentially good participants, which is clearly a possible area of concern for most practitioners because you don't really want to miss out on potentially good people who can be very useful within the organizational context. ETYL also simultaneously approached different organizations to nominate employees who they consider are capable leaders. And these nominations get the benefit of a direct entry into phase two. And the phase two pool is thus a combination of phase one candidates and uh, the corporate nominations. A percentage of phase one test takers and corporate nominations make it to the phase two. And once this list is finalized, ETYL announces the list of the phase one qualifiers and the site is again made live for the phase two candidates. Let's move on to the next phase. The second phase is where the shortlisted applicants are required to undergo a most stringent assessment process. And typically you find about 3,000 odd participants who qualify for this phase of the assessment, and uh, the assessment regime includes the OPQ, a five-star rated psychometric tool by the BPS, uh, which is the British Psychological Society, and uh, SHL Verify. 
OPQ, as you, as most of you are aware, is the is an occupational model of personality designed solely for the use of business environment. It provides a clear and a simple framework for understanding the inclination of the individual's preferences within the workplace, as also the impact it has on job performance. The OBQ is designed to provide businesses with insight on aspects of the individual's behavioral style, the preferences, if you will, that are likely to impact the way the individual is likely to respond to work situations, and therefore the competencies that are at play within the work context. It provides an in-depth insight across the key competencies that are required, not only at the manager or a leader level, but also at the graduate level. The OPQ assesses 32 specific personality characteristics which uh, determine or underpin job performance. And the scores of the OPQ can be assessed, provide, provided by a range of reports, ranging from profile reports, uh, universal competency report, uh, leadership report, uh, universal competency development planner report, emotional intelligence report, and so on and so forth. Within the UTYL context, what we did was to use the universal competency report because that provides a concise and an accurate and relevant information about the individual's potential to perform across a range of job competencies. And as I mentioned earlier on, we looked at uh, from the universal competency framework, a set of uh, critical or crucial competencies that were identified as crucial uh, for success uh, by a number of uh, different stakeholder in interventions. Over a hundred years of research has shown that there is an absolute linear relationship between the level of mental ability and the job training outcomes and the job performance measures. It's one of the best established bits of data in psychology is what Professor Dave Bottram said. Although one can think of examples of exceptionally bright leaders who, could have, uh, who have failed disastrously, mental ability is undoubtedly important and should be tested for leadership positions. And this is basically the corporate research forum uh, which stated this. SHL verify is essentially an, a superior approach to online testing. It is a complete testing solution that includes a unique combination of ability tests, security measures, and better practice guidelines, which are designed specifically for online testing. And better practice has been developed by SHL to help practitioners overcome the risks of unsupervised online testing. And um, the Verify item bank generates uh, unique online ability tests for every applicant and this improves the security of the content, prevents test content from being shared and reduces the risk of cheating, uh, which is a clear concern for most of us who are uh, involved in assessing individuals. The cutting edge technology developed by the uh, organization support the science behind the Verify which ensures a highly sophisticated randomized step generation built on the pioneering technology behind the ability screening online, the ASO of SHL. Following the powerful online verbal ability test, the a verification test is provided. Built as part of the package, the verification test quickly confirms the integrity of the results gained from the unsupervised online test. And uh, this verification process is based on breakthrough innovations in psychometrics that verify the candidate's performance quickly, simply, and uh, scientifically. There are essentially two tests that we adopt within the ETYL context. One is the verbal reasoning test, and the other is the numerical reasoning test. The verbal reasoning test essentially analyzes the, uh, the capability of the individual to analyze and interpret and evaluate written and oral information. And also reason out verbal information that one typically encounters within the business environment. And the test typically has about 30 odd items and takes about 17 to 19 minutes to complete. And this form of reasoning is uh, commonly required to support work and decision making across different types of jobs in the leadership role. And improving the candidate's experience of the assessment by marrying a short assessment 
to effective technology. The numerical reasoning test is clearly relevant for job levels across industries and focuses on measuring the candidate's ability to make correct decisions or inferences from numerical or statistical data. The test measures the ability to work with numerical data and uh, is placed in realistic workplace context. And the task will essentially involve analyzing some data in the form of graphs or charts and performing some kind of calculations and answering a short question that follows that uh, graph set. And typically this would take about 70 to 25 minutes and uh, the individuals are expected to, to cover 18 odd questions. The benefits of this kind of an approach is where you have significantly reduced the time and cost to select by allowing unsuitable candidates to be removed from the process early on. And it also allows for a seamless integration in terms of existing processes and the applicant's tracking system. And uh, underpinning all of this is a fair assessment process by using a test that does not discriminate between individuals, groups. Both are essentially unsupervised tests and uh, the expectation is the candidate can take this assessment anywhere sitting in their uh, area of comfort. With that, you move on to the next phase, which is uh, phase three, uh, the assessment center. The applicants who clear the second phase are essentially required to be part of this on-ground assessment in a development center context. Typically, you find about 300 odd participants who have progressed into the phase of the assessment process. And uh, this is conducted at selected cities, i.e. Mumbai, Bangalore and Delhi in India. And candidates are called in groups of eight to 10 individuals and a detailed set of assessment designs are put together to ensure a comprehensive assessment of these individuals. The assessments include a couple of group activities and individual case study and um, this would also have scenarios and simulations that will provide a realistic opportunity for you to assess individuals in realistic settings. And uh, you will have applicants who are entering this phase who are required to uh, undertake a verification test that I mentioned earlier, which is a short 25 minute assessment in comparing the verbal and the numerical components. And the output emerges as either verified or not verified. And a protocol has been put together to address cases of not verified to ensure a standard approach is followed across the board. A group of seasoned assessors drawn from industry deliver the assessments, which is typically a half-day process. And based on the assessment output, a merit list is generated, which is an integrated score on, for each individual across each competency and an overall score. A detailed feedback reports are presented to participants detailing their individual areas of strength on the one hand, and also possible areas for strengthening, which is in keeping with the best practice for any assessments of this kind. Individuals who clear this process move on to the phase four, and uh, typically you have about 80 individuals who reach this uh, stage um, on a year yearly basis. Jury who I referenced early on in the uh, discussion encompassing top industry leaders are involved in this process, wherein we have an in-depth one-to-one interview that is carried out uh, with the individual. The jury members are sensitized on the process and the list of competencies that the young leaders are assessed on. The sensitization session ensures the standard approach to assessing participants uh, is adopted and similar outcomes are arrived at. An accumulative integrated assessment is made thereon and the winners are identified. Now what I'd like to do is, having gone through these phases, um, I'd like to highlight certain process highlights, which really are uh, key um, pieces that we need to bear in mind in terms of uh, what makes this really tick. A structured step-by-step step -step process 
provides the logical, objective, and scientific framework to enhance the selection ratio significantly. The assessment process adopted within the ETYL context lends itself to a number of distinct benefits that can clearly be mirrored and replicated in other organizational contexts, and that's the reason I'd like to call this out for you. One is clearly the earlier decision making. The selection process does not have uh, to be cumbersome in order to be precise or effective. Empowering candidates to make informed decisions by providing selectors the predictive insights to move the right applicants to the next phase in the hiring process faster and more easily. And implementing these online processes mean tests can be delivered to applicants during preliminary stages, which means that the information can be used for screening and decision making much earlier. It's also time and money saving. By identifying best talent earlier and progressing them faster, the length of the, of the selection process can be significantly reduced. And online testing processes also save time by removing the need for staff to physically administer tests until a later stage. And then for a smaller pool of candidates. And testing online enables HR teams to do more hiring within the same HR staff. And this is, um, there is clearly no need for purchase, tour, or transporting of materials to assessment centers, which can clearly be very, very cost intensive. Administrative and practical efficiency and the benefits of the unsupervised testing online are particularly strong in high volume uh, selection scenarios. The process of accessing candidates in different locations and different languages is uh, far more easier and I'm essentially extrapolating this uh, to our organizational context. It requires very little administrative effort and results can be accessed much, much faster. And more importantly, the positive candidate experience uh, or to be able to provide a candidate-centric experience, if you will, is clearly the hallmark of this process. That designing the selection process to deliver value to every candidate, regardless of the outcome, is really the key takeaway. In a candidate-centric experience, organizations explain the application process and the job requirements and the activities, and they give immediate feedback on how the candidate compares to role qualifications, which is essentially what we did within the EGYL context. And this transparency empowers candidates to make informed decisions about each step and to choose whether to continue or not. And uh, industry experts suggest that it takes 12 positive customer experiences to make up for the revenue loss from one poor customer experience. A survey result uh, I showed that excellent customer service is one of the most important characteristics of the company's brand reputation. Let me share with you some more research data. Almost half of the job candidates have been left with a negative view of the uh, company following the recruitment process. Over a third uh, of the candidates, actually 36%, complained to their friends and family after experiencing a bad selection process. Almost one in 10, 9%, took to the web using social media sites and personal blogs to spread the word of uh, their negative view. A fifth of these have taken their custom elsewhere as a result. So it becomes extremely critical for us to ensure a seamless experience for candidates and uh, that candidates go about talking of the great experience they have had in the entire selection process. In a few minutes from now, I shall have Priyanka Kosla, a ETYL winner, share her experience of how she experienced the entire process. And uh, consistency across geographies is the final one where the best practices improve the hiring outcomes by using predictive tools and uh, allowing for competencies to be assessed based on scientific tools rather than on impressions about individuals. A tiered process, such as the one that we employed in the ETYL, ensures the opportunity to standardize our approach to assessment and the availability of the same results in multiple contexts across time and space just expedites the entire assessment and provides for a 
fantastic experience for both the organization as also for the individual. Let me highlight for you some process issues and risks that we need to be cognizant of, that we were, are aware of and alive to within the UTYL context. And these are perhaps relevant for other organizations as well. The risks of psychometric integrity, when objective assessment and particular ability tests are delivered online, the impact on the psychometric properties behind the test is uh, significant and we need to ensure that the underlying science of their online test is clearly robust. The test provider should ensure that the security and protection methods are in place to protect the test content and also that the candidates cannot preview and practice the test covertly other than providing uh, clear practice sessions to the candidates. The technology issues essentially to ensure that online testing system performs reliably and provides a smooth experience to users in uh, as being a key requirement and there are steps that can be taken to manage the risk, putting the IT department to contact with the test provider and at the outset and ensuring that any possible issue is ironed out and uh, even before the, the online testing program clearly is launched. The reputational issues, particularly with regards to the unsupervised online testing delivery, uh, reduces the level of control that you exercise over the testing environment and reduces the opportunity to engage in a dialogue with the candidate at the time of the assessment. And it is important, therefore, to ensure that the candidate can obtain help and support if required and when required, and there are uh, mechanisms put in place to be able to provide that access. The legal implications, again, is something that one needs to be cognizant of, which is to do with the articulating a clear assessment policy which is in place that outlines how the assessment process is appropriate for the business need and meets the requirements of the employment law. And uh, though within the Indian context, this is clearly not something that we need to be worried about, but just having that in place provides you a sufficient edge uh, to uh, protect oneself uh, against potential litigation. Fairness and quality, which is uh, perhaps uh, the, the most important of all of these, which is extrapolating the selection process adopted within the UTYL to our organizations, it can be safely concluded that uh, the selection process is uh, critical and is not only in terms of acquiring the right candidates, but also in terms of strengthening their performance and their intent to stay once they are on the role. Unfortunately, traditional application processes frustrate and burden the candidates, resulting in a highly negative experience. And our research shows that one in five applicants will take negative action after a poor candidate experience, causing damage to the brand as also lost revenue that I referenced early on. And it becomes therefore important for one to provide that fairness and quality in the way the entire assessment process is perceived by candidates as they go through the process. Now perhaps this is an opportune time for us to hear from uh, one of our EGYL winners on her experience of how she experienced the EGYL process. Priyanka Kostler is, uh, was selected as the Economic Times Young Leader uh, and in 2016 and she has uh, received the NHRDN and the Professor Ramcharan Young HR Icon Award in 2014. Uh, Priyanka is part of the group management cadre at the Mahindra Group and is currently working as the manager talent management at Mahindra and Mahindra. Um, I have her credentials on screen so you can read through that without much ado. May I call Priyanka to um, share her experience with us now. Thank you Dr. Pearl and good morning everyone. Uh, ETYL for me was truly an amazing experience, overwhelming and humbling at the same time. Winning ETYL not only gave me the opportunity to meet some of the industry leaders whom I had only read about in the papers, but also to network with some extremely intelligent and interesting peers. But most importantly, for me, this recognition was a very important stepping stone to pursue my dreams. As Dr. Pearl described, ETYL had four phases, uh, and for the first phase, uh, I was exempted from that phase as I was nominated by Mahindra. 
The second phase, the personality and ability test, was a very tough test and amongst all the people I knew, only one or two actually got through. The third phase for me was a very interesting phase. It was the online assessment center that was there and this uh, stage exposed me to cases and situations which were not exactly in my comfort zone and I got to learn a lot from the people around me who were there. So one of the first cases I got through was a case on mergers of two banks and being an HR professional and looking through the financial data it was very tough for me. Uh, but it was also very interesting to learn about other people's perspectives and questioning their perspectives actually gave me an insight about what uh, happens and uh, how we can actually go ahead and uh, find a solution for the case. The second case for uh, the assessment center was an ethics case and it was about a person who had over, uh, over promised to the client and we had to discuss the actions that we could take in the short and the long term. The next case where we had to discuss as a group was a marketing case and we, it was also a very, very interesting case and we had to figure out the segmentation, positioning, etc. of another bank that was there and how it wanted to be marketed in the new age. After this, the fourth phase was a phase that was very, very special to me. So it was, my interview was taken by uh, the CEO and Managing Director of HUL, that is Mr. Sanjeev Mehta. And the interview was of the sort that I had never really experienced before. It was more of a conversation than a question and answer round. And I was taken uh, aback by a lot of questions that he asked me. It is something that I'll definitely remember for a very, very long time to come. So Mr. Mehta started by asking about my childhood, right from school to college to, uh, to Ernst & Young where I worked before, to why I joined my MBA. So he basically charted out everything in front of me, you know, what my experience, uh, experiences were at each stage. Uh, after that, he went on, went on to what my purpose in life was. So we had a very long discussion about this as I have a lot of perspectives about this and he gave me his own views, he questioned me, he grilled me about what I wanted to do in life and it was a very, very interesting viewpoint that I got. He also asked me to give an impromptu speech about leadership to an imaginary class of class 10 students. After this, there was a very, very, uh, you know, uh, he took me, uh, by surprise when he asked me that you know what you are one of the youngest people who has come to this stage and why do you think you should win this award especially at such a young age when you've already got a very huge platform by winning the Professor Ramcharan and NHRD awards. Uh, it was tough but it, the interview itself you know it lasted uh, for about 40-45 minutes and it was a very very interesting thing it did not intimidate me it did, it did not scare me but it was more of a conversation and before I got to know it, it was over. So it was something that I'll really remember for a very, very long time. Overall, the whole ETVAL process was something that really inspired me and it made me uh, discover a lot about myself, whether it's the assessment center or the interview. It made me think about what I want to do ahead and made me actually discover my strengths and weaknesses. So it was an amazing stepping stone for me and something that uh, I will be recognized by and something that I myself will not forget for a very, very long time to come. Carl, over to you. Thanks Priyanka for sharing that uh, very, very uh, um, interesting experience that you had with the uh, uh, entire EGY process and I'm sure that was uh, enriching uh, to you as, as uh, it came out. Um, I'm conscious of the time, so I'd like to very quickly move on to the next part uh, of uh, the presentation. And in this section, what I'd like to do is to essentially walk you through some assessment trends and comparisons within the Indian benchmark. I will not dwell too much on this section, but uh, what I'd like to do is to call out some interesting factors that, that are contributing to making the ET young leader. Uh, one of the things that we referenced early on was 
uh, the fact that um, ability is a very key well, determinant. Yes. Uh, you've got about five minutes uh, because we want some questions because there's a hard stop exactly at 11 o'clock. If you can rush through right. and opportunity for questions. Thank you. Right, absolutely. Thanks, thanks, Parant. Um, so what you do find is that the winners um, are uh, of the ETYL are essentially 70% better in numerical reasoning and 68% better in verbal reasoning. So one clear facet that uh, emerges across the board is that the verbal and the numerical abilities are significant determinants of effectiveness on the job. And what you do find also uh, is the ETYL winners are clearly those who are strategically tuned and also have a high focus on relating and networking, that is the capability to be able to effectively interact with key stakeholders, connect with individuals, and be able to network with them. Interestingly though, uh, delivering results and meeting customer expectations was an area that came out to be rather low uh, in, in this group, and, and that's an area that would be very interesting to know what is it that is resulting in a lower propensity for uh, this group. And what we did was to look at these leaders in comparison with the India benchmark, and the India benchmark essentially encompasses uh, a range of similar level leaders drawn from across industries over the last five years. And what you see is across the board, the ETYL leaders are significantly head and shoulders above the India benchmark, save the uh, issue of uh, delivering results and customer expectations. And that's, that's clearly something that uh, would be interesting to get to uh, get under the surface on. And in terms of an outcome, what emerges is the applicants uh, make it about 24, under 25 percent of the applicants really make it to phase four from phase three. And uh, one percent of the applicants who sit for the first round make their way to phase the panelists and 0.5% of the applicants actually uh, win the coveted title. And that, that's clearly an interesting one. Um, in in some summary, therefore, what I'd like to call out is it becomes extremely important for one to identify leadership talent early on. And adopting a standardized framework really lends itself for comparisons across the industry and uh, uh, therefore perhaps using valid assessment tools uh, is a very, very uh, important step. While volumes are high, moving the filter up the funnel provides a significant benefit to the organization in ensuring that time and effort is uh, focused on the key talent that you would like to select in rather than wasting time on those that can be sifted out. Leveraging technology and managing candidate experience uh, in terms of building a brand becomes very crucial for success. With that, uh, thank you very much uh, for your time and I'm happy to take any questions if there are. Thank you, Paul, and uh, thank you, Priyanka. Uh, uh, I, this was a very, very good uh, overview of the entire talent assessment process, particularly the ETYL uh, and uh, the breadth of fresh air that uh, Priyanka brought in in terms of sharing her own experience as she went through was really very good. The floor is now open for questions. Please be specific uh, uh, on your questions and I will direct it to people as relevant. Uh, so we have one question from Mr. Krishnan. Can OPQ be used for career profiling? Which career to choose? Right, thank you so much uh, for that question. OPQ is a powerful insighting tool and it uh, unravels different facets of the individual uh, across the working uh, spheres, across the, how the individual relates uh, to critical stakeholders and people around in the work environment as also one's own feelings and emotions and all of these are intertwined if you will uh, to what makes the person fit within the organization. So yes, Given that we are holistic individuals and we operate in a holistic environment, 
uh, it does give you a significant insight in terms of uh, the, the possible areas that you are likely to find your niche in and that may not necessarily be the areas that you currently are in. So it, it's quite possible that I might gravitate towards uh, a particular role within, within the organization because of uh, the uh, so-called aspirational issues attached with it or uh, the attractive proposition that role may have. However, um, from, a, from a personality standpoint in terms of why I naturally gravitate towards, I probably may not necessarily be a good fit there. So yes, understanding the OPQ and helping unravel the personality does provide you an opportunity to get to understand what kind of roles you are likely to flourish in. Thank you, uh, Pearl. Uh, we have one more question from Mr. Manpreet Sharma. Was applicant manager's observation feedback float? I'm sorry, you need to repeat that. I, I didn't follow that. Okay. Uh, the question is, was applicant manager's observation feedback float? Short. Yes. What application? Manager. No, no, no. Well, the question is, well, well, the question is uh, did the applicant's manager, did you receive feedback from the applicant's managers? Applicant's managers in terms of their effectiveness? Yes, or any feedback right. from the candidate. Right. Um, so essentially, we have had very positive feedback from the candidates in terms of experiences, and Priyanka is one of those uh, that we have on board. From the managers of these participants, uh, given that managers have uh, particularly those uh, organizations that were uh, contacted by uh, ET um, to nominate uh, individuals into the process, we really had uh, managers sort of opining on their, their people who are effective individuals. So in that sense, you know, you have had uh, people, managers who would have uh, taken stock of these individuals who would potentially be progressed into the ETYL process. But if your question is uh, around how the managers perceive the ETYL process and did we have feedback around it, the answer is no. Well, the other question is, uh, Pearl, uh, did you incorporate the inputs of the managers uh, into your assessment process? No, that was not done. There is there's no, and that is not possible because we didn't have uh, uh, no, all correct. the participants who were nominated. That's fair, that's fair. We just wanted to have that perspective. Next question, Avinash. You have another question? Looks like there are no questions, um, so what I will do, I want to take this opportunity uh, to thank uh, uh, Pearl, Dr. Pearl, for this wonderful overview and deep insights that he drew from the uh, entire assessment process and the various perspectives uh, that were given uh, that was really very comprehensive. And uh, we also want to thank Priyanka for sharing her experience as she went through and I sincerely hope that this excites uh, and uh, motivates other potential uh, managers to be part of this process, if not this year, in the coming years. Uh, and I want to thank uh, Corporate Executive Board uh, and National HRD Network for jointly putting together this wonderful learning session. And uh, trust this was useful. Uh, do write in with your comments uh, to NHRDN. And uh, if there are any questions that come by way of uh, email, uh, and comments, uh, NHRDN will uh, definitely uh, forward it to Dr. Pearl and uh, incorporate those answers and give it back to you. Thank you once again for everybody who has participated. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Anand Pillai, for your wonderful words of conclusion. Thank you. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you, everyone, sir.